In this video, I will provide you with some examples of how angles might not work as well as measurements when dealing with polygons like a pentagon. So let's go ahead and start with these measurements here. And of course, we can start and end our stairs at any point in the hexagon. It doesn't need to make a full circle. If a half circle or three quarters of a circle will work better for your project. And the angles from the inside out are going to be 72 degrees. We're just simply going to divide 5 into 360. And if I was going to start here and go all the way around and end here, or start here and go all the way around and end here with 10 steps, then something like this might work for your project. And I'm simply going to the middle of this line here for this particular layout design. And then I can divide this into four sections and then connect the dots if I want to, to create this design. And we're going to need to stick with the measurements here. We're not going to work with the angles. So if I had four steps here, I'm going to divide this measurement here into four sections. And that's basically what I did here. You're not going to be using the angles. So to give you an idea, the angle of the green sections here coming off of the center are each 16 degrees. The yellow angles are 20 degrees. However, all of our measurements should work out equally. And if I want to use three steps here, I just simply divide this measurement here into three to create these increments. And I can do the same on the inside also. And as long as I have my center point, I can lay out these marks here and snap a line from the center to this point here and from this point here to the center and then double check these measurements to make sure they're the same. And as always, whenever you're building stairs, you've got to double check all of your measurements. So again, the angles here are going to be different and you're not really going to be worrying about the angles. You're going to worry about the measurements, including the walk line measurement should be exactly the same in each section. So for example, I could use the measurements here for this section and this this section also. Next up, let's go ahead and change the angles to where they are exactly the same. 24 degrees in each section coming off of this point here to show you how it's going to affect our stairway. So we're going to have different measurements here and different measurements here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. In case you can't see that over here, we have 1 foot 7 and 15 16 inches. And then in the center, we have 1 foot 4 and a half inches. And then we go back to the same measurement here as the first step. And next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the exact angles, 24 degrees for each section for a circular step. And in this example here, we shouldn't have a problem all of the measurements. I went ahead and I took this step here and placed it into each section to verify that each one of the steps are exactly the same measurements. And I think this is where a lot of people get messed up because they think they can go ahead and divide everything up into equal degrees when that won't always work for straight lines. Curved lines, yes. Straight lines, no. In this video, I am going to provide you with a method or a few methods you might be able to use to position a five-sided building foundation or something shaped as a pentagon. And for those of you wondering why we don't use pentagons very often, it will usually have something to do with cutting and building a sloping roof. However, it can be done, and that will be a future video. So the first thing I want to point out is that we're going to be using a circle because it's the only method I can think of to create a diameter or a measurement to position a pentagon exactly where it needs to be. However, you might be able to get away with just using a straight line if the location doesn't need to be located right on the money, along with using a few measurements to make it a little more precise. However, it might not be in the exact position you need it to be. And I'll explain a little more about that further on in the video. So let's go ahead and install our pentagon along with our circle and a square that you might form up 
so that you can pull measurements from it. However, this is not going to be necessary along with the circle in most cases. So here we have the diameter of the circle, 10 feet, the side of the square, 10 feet, and the measurement we're going to need to figure out the length of the sides here. And this is what I think really simplifies this project. Because if we multiply the radius or half of the diameter, the radius is going to be 5 feet or 60 inches times 1.176, it will provide us with the length of each side. Each side is going to have the same length. So if you already know what the sides are going to be, you don't need the formula. You can simply start with a center line and then follow the step-by-step -step instructions in the rest of the video. However, before we do that, let's just go ahead and type in 60 or 5 feet, whatever is going to be easier for you. But I found that working in inches is usually going to provide us with a more accurate measurement and something that's going to be a little easier to convert than a decimal that you're going to end up with if you use feet. So let's go ahead and multiply 60 or the radius of the circle. And the radius is simply the measurement from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle. And let's multiply that by 1.176. And we're going to end up with 70 and a half inches, just a little over 70 and a half inches. And if you need this thing to be right on the money, then you'd better convert this decimal to a fraction. However, if it can be off just a little bit, then you can probably just cut your boards at 70 and a half inches or even 70 and 5 eighths of an inch. So again, as I mentioned, you can either form up a square and then run a string from one end of the form to the other end. Or you can simply drive a couple of stakes in the ground. So you can drive a stake over here, a stake in the ground over here, and then connect the two stakes with a string to create a straight line. And the center line of your pentagon. And again, this is going to depend upon how accurate you need everything to be, along with your experience level in forming odd shapes like this. Then we're going to cut five equal length boards with a 36 degree angle at each end. And since we're going to be forming a concrete slab, we're going to want our measurement to go from the short point of each board or the inside of the form and not the outside. So we're going to create five boards with a 36 degree angle and an inside measurement from short point of the angle to short point of the angle at 70 and a half inches. Next up, let's go ahead and grab two of the boards and fasten them together with either nails or screws. And you don't need to really do it this way. You could nail all of the boards together and then position it to where it needs to go or follow these instructions. And remember, since we're forming up the outside of the foundation, we're going to need to connect to the inside of the angle with the measurement that we're using to position the pentagon exactly where it needs to be. If it actually needs to be positioned in a spot exactly. If it doesn't, then you're going to have a little more leeway with this project. Next up, let's go ahead and fasten the next two boards to the other ones here. And then we will fasten the last board to create our five-sided foundation. And hopefully the position of the pentagon along with the center line that we're using Using becomes a little bit clearer here because the center line here at this point will line up with the center of the angle and down here it will line up with half of the distance of the measurement that we have here providing us with another reference point to position the pentagon and if you did form up or use some type of string lines to represent a square then you'll be able to take measurements off of it the measurement from this side will be the same as the one on the other side. However, you can also measure from your center string line because the distance from the center will be the same on both sides. And you can see here what I'm talking about where we can line the center of this board here up with the center of our string line to provide us with the position of this board here. However, we would need a parallel line 
or like I said before, a string or a form on the outside, creating some type of a square shape that we could measure off of to make sure that this board here is parallel to the line here. So again, the square that we're running around the perimeter here. And of course, another thing you can do to double check everything on a pentagon, what you're going to want to do will be to measure from one point to the other point and then make sure that all of these measurements are exactly the same. And if they aren't, then this might require you to pull this in a little bit or move it down or move a couple of the other points until all of these measurements are the same. And this might not be that big of a deal if you're going to be building a flat patio roof on top. But it might be a bigger deal if you're going to have hip rafters coming off of each point. And if you want to flip it around and have this side over here then you could do the same thing with your center line you would just simply be starting from this side here and then following the same guidelines or instructions or you could simply place your first board here have it parallel off of the building whatever distance you need along with making sure that the center of this board lines up with the center line you're going to be using to form your pentagon and then simply go backwards with the instructions here, starting with this board and then finishing with this point here. And hopefully that makes sense because I have about said all I could possibly say about this at this point in time. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button and any questions you have, feel free to leave them in the video comment area. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.